Welcome back to this week's video where we're going to talk about stucco. There's a couple of stages. We're starting the first one today, so let's go. So behind me is the machine that they use to mix this sand with the plastic cement that creates a scratched coat that's going on the wall right now. Uh, basically, they shovel it into there. I don't know the portions, but they mix it up. They add some water through it and it pumps through their gun. Their gun has three cords going through it. One is the mixture, the other one is the power, and the last one is air. And it basically, as you can Spits see, out all over and makes a lot of noise. So that basically they shoot all the scratch coat onto the house. It's a lot faster than doing it by hand. That's why it's good to have a machine here. Some sections where they're not able to get to or they forget or miss, they'll load it up into a little bucket and hit those spots and make sure everything's done correctly. So let's take a step back and talk about the first stage of uh, stucco. I know we talked about it in a previous video that we did mention is in the description, but I want to just go over it for everybody that hasn't watched that video yet. You guys should definitely check that out. So Eddie, why don't you tell me what we did for that coat? So step one for stucco is the lath, which is the black paper and the wire mesh. You put the black paper on the house to protect the inside from the outside. Then you put that wire mesh all around it. That wire mesh is what the scratch coat is going to sit on. After you put in the lath, you're going to cover up the little holes, protrusions, nails, anything that you puncture the, the lath with, you want to cover those with sealant. So we went ahead into that and then we called out an inspector. The inspector came, checked everything was sealed, said, hey, walk through the house to the inside, see if you have any light peep holes and seal those as well. It's just an added step to, to create more waterproofing and more bug repellent and everything else. Once they sign off on the lath inspection, then you can go ahead and do the scratch coat. So on the scratch coat, one of the things that's important to note is to wait for the drywall to be hung. So we waited till all the drywall was hung and then we told our stucco guy, hey, come back out here and start putting in the scratch coat, which is step two. The reason that we waited to put up the scratch coat is a few things. Drywall weighs down the house, so that might cause more cracking in the scratch coat and the stucco. So if you hang all that up and you give it a little bit of time to, to settle in, that's good. Also, if you're using impact drills or if you're using nails for your house, which we use screws, it's going to also create a lot of uh, vibrations in the home, which would cause cracking. So you want to kind of get all the uh, major vibrations of the house done and over with before you start layering on the stucco. If you're finding this video informational, hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel and hit the little bell notification. Besides that, let's walk around a little bit and show some of the features of our stucco. So we're walking towards the front of the house so Sam can show you some of our channels. But before we get there, I want to stop and point at these wires right here. So these are camera wires. And what we noticed was one of them was actually left up behind the lath of the stucco. I mentioned that to the guys this morning and they pulled it out to make sure both camera wires are protruding outside of the stucco. If they had buried these, it would be impossible for us to find. So it's really important to pay attention to what is here. And if they haven't pulled out wires before they put in the scratch coat, you got to make sure to tell them, hey, I'm missing a wire here. You got to find it behind the lath. Now let's jump into the front where Sam talks about our channels. So I'm standing in front of the house. The garage is directly below me. And as you could see right here, you may not see clearly, but there's channels that go down right here, right here. There's a few reasons for those channels. As we told you guys, in the previous video, we're doing smooth finish in the front and in the back, and we're doing a sand finish along the sides. This creates both a design for the home, since we are doing that more modern look, it gives a more of a modern feel to the house. It also creates breaks in the stucco, which is great for cracking or preventing cracking there as. Also, what Eddie didn't mention is the reason we were checking up here is because we are stuccoing our eaves. We could have also wrapped around and did a full stucco, which goes back to planning your roof properly and making sure you have a flange or an overhang here that the stucco can come directly under. Um, that kind of wraps it up for today. We'll see you guys in two days, well, or in two seconds to see us putting on the brown coat. So we're spraying brown coat today. Uh, we were supposed to actually spray this two days ago, but we had a little bit of rain in LA. Rain. And yes, rain. And our scratch coat got a little wet, so we want to make sure that our scratch coat is completely dry. 
Now that it's dry, they're putting on the brown coat. It looks like the brown coat is a much more even layer than the scratch coat was. I think yeah. the scratch coat is more to hold in the mesh and hold in the brown coat that's going on right now. So they're spraying that around the house right now. They're walking around with a... <laughs> smoothing it out. They have a long trial. They're smoothing everything out. So we're going to see what the process kind of looks like and talk more about it because we honestly don't know what's going on either. So you guys are probably not completely aware of where I'm standing, but this is the master bedroom outside of it. Uh, we have these metal channels that are throughout the house in different areas. One of them is above this door. They forgot to finish it coming down here. So what they're going to have to do is basically come back and hand mud this and make sure they put this channel in here. So these are a few things that you got to kind of be walking around the job site and uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, you deal with little issues here and there that you have to pay attention to make sure that you get your final details in the house the way that you want. This is a small thing. If we ended up not putting it, it wouldn't be that big of a deal, but it would be a pet peeve for me until the day that we sold this house and until the day that I was no longer on this planet. So to avoid that, they're gonna fix this problem for us because we caught it in time. So we're outside, they finished spraying, smoothing out, whatever, the brown coat on this side. A few things we learned because this is our first time going through this, so we're figuring stuff out as we go. The brown coat, they sprayed on. They sprayed on similar to the scratch coat, but then they bring like a, not a level, but like a straight edge and flatten it out. They scrape it, but as they're scraping it, it creates a very smooth surface, kind of like a concrete surface. Then they come back with a trowel they smooth it out more, they level it, and then they turn the trowel sideways and they run it across with the scratch it. Across, yeah, which creates this little scratchy texture you see over here. Another cool thing we realize is, maybe not cool, just interesting, they level this with the fin of the window. So when you look at this, it looks pretty much level. Maybe it's off by a hair, like an eighth of an inch, if that. Yeah. So it looks like this coat comes pretty level and then the color coat is going to be a much thinner coat on top of this, it looks like. But, it's very uh, interesting. So they're, they're wrapping up on the other sides of the house. Once this is set, we got to let this dry for how long? Uh, at least, they say seven to ten days, but I think we're going to wait a little bit longer than that just to make sure it gets really strong. A couple of other steps you want to take throughout this process is watering the concrete. This is concrete, basically. So you want to be watering it, keeping it wet and basically slowing down the drying process that creates for a much harder concrete less cracking capabilities and you also i think we're going to end up letting it dry for two weeks because we're in no rush to get the color on here and there's really no point in rushing this and uh causing cracking down the line so we have our metal channels and stuff you just want to make sure all your metal channels and everything is exposed we ran through and make sure all the light cans all the electrical wires security cameras all that stuff was was staking out still and they didn't accidentally cover it up. So I think that kind of wraps up for today, but we'll catch you guys in about two weeks when they're putting on the final coat. A lot of rain, a lot of uh, prepping the exterior and deciding on what we're gonna do. And this is the next layer that we're going through. It's the polybond mesh adhesive layer. So what they're doing, as you guys can see, is they're laying this on there and then putting a cement adhesive if you guys notice, we're only doing this on the front and the back of the house. Why is that, Eddie? Because the front and the back is where we're doing smooth, I make the decisions and I decided that out. way. For financial reasons and for cost savings, we decided to do a sand on the side and smooth on the front and back. So the smooth is the only one that really needs this. You can go the extra step and put this on the sides of the house as well on sand finishes to help with any hairline cracking, but... It shouldn't matter too much. You won't really be able to see it, which is another reason why we're doing sand finishes because nobody really goes to the side yards that much. And it'll cost a lot more money to get those smooth as well. And we're not in Beverly Hills. Yes, and the, <laughs> the, the company that's doing our uh, stucco for us let us know that this is kind of overkill to do it on uh, sand finishes. But maybe in the future, we'll, we'll decide to use it. So we won't know. So they're gonna wrap this up today. And then I think maybe a week from now, they'll do the final layer and it'll start looking like a house. It'll start actually looking like a house. That's it. We're done with the house, guys. We're not done with the house. We're done with the stucco. <laughs> We're just done with the stucco. Or we're not fully done with the stucco, but We got minor the front details. and the back smooth done. We got to do the sand on the side. Um, honestly, I have no idea what we recorded. Uh, so I'm just going to go over really quickly. 
you got the lath. You got to cover everything into the metal mesh. And then you got to do the scratch coat and the and brown, the brown coat. coat. And then we did a poly mesh on the front and the back of the house. That's to stop it from potentially cracking. After we did that, we did the smooth set coat, which is the final coat. And then we're going to do the sand on the side, which is also the final coat on the side. Total cost of the house uh, right here. We have about 40 feet in the front, it goes down 75 feet on each side and then 40 feet in the back. So that brings you around 230 linear feet. We got about 10 foot high, so 2,300. Pretty sure it's more than 10 feet high. Call it 2,500 square feet of stucco. $18,000 was our total price. We got a really good coat. We're really happy with our stucco guy. If you guys need a reference, feel free to reach out to us on Instagram. We'll plug that down here. What else do you have to say about the stucco? Nothing. It looks really nice. I hope it doesn't crack. Thank you guys for staying in tune. Uh, this video has been a long time in the making. Uh, why did it take so long? Because stucco should be done in about a month. Well, because we weren't in a real rush to get our stucco done since we had so much other work that we were trying to get done. There was no rush to get the stucco in. And every single time we actually scheduled them to do the poly coat or the final coat, uh, it would rain and then when it rains you want to let it fully dry and cure for at least a week to 10 days to two weeks so every time it would get to that point it would rain again in california where we don't really get rain in la at least let's rain yeah so that kind of created delays um but at the end of the day everything's looking good we're really really happy with it we had lost a couple of light holes that they covered up they have easily found those and i'm really really happy with everything we got a garage door and front door the house looks like a house I know this week we're supposed to talk about the cost of the garage door, talk about the cost of the glass inside, the wine wall and all that, but that's gonna be next week's video because we finished this before that. Sequence of events. Make sure you guys hit that thumbs up button, hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell. If you guys have any comments or questions, leave them down below. Once again, $18,000, we're gonna add that to our total number right here. That's the total cost of the house at this point. You have any idea where we're at? Somewhere around 450, I think. I think we're closer to 400. We'll see you guys next week.